Hi, I'm Jeff Stelling and this is Football's Greatest Euros. I've been joined by Paul Merson and each week throughout the tournament we'll discuss the games and the goals and the headlines around England and Scotland. We'll also get Merce to list some of his favourite Euro moments and players. But today we are answering your questions about the Euros, about football, about us. Email me and Merce at footballsgreatestfoldingpocket.co.uk or leave us a voice note on 0203 951 9653. 0203 951 9653. Welcome to Football's Greatest Euros. So look, uh, first question uh, comes from TS. What are your thoughts on us going with a back three, especially in the bigger games? I don't think the defence or centre-halves are good enough to play in a back four and need more protection. That is a hard, is a hard one, Jeff. Because as I said, I know teams haven't a go, haven't had a go at us, but we've been all, we've been good defensively. You know, Pickford hasn't had to do too much. You know, we, we're struggling to score goals. You end up putting another defender in. You're taking a forward out. We're going to even struggle even more to score a goal. So, you know, I I, I think we have enough protection back four and Declan Rice sitting in front and probably Mainu as well. So. I, I wouldn't do that myself. No, I don't think there's a need for that at the moment. And, and by the way, TS, um, our best player at the tournament so far has been one of those centre-halves that you don't think is good enough. As Mark Gay, he was enhanced his reputation no end. Outstanding. Yeah, yeah been absolutely outstanding. He, he wouldn't even have played if Harry Maguire was fit. Yeah. But if Harry Maguire was fit, we'd have been a big threat from set plays, which at the moment looked like a waste of time. Uh, Derek Piggott. Goodness me, mm. uh, Leicester won me so much money over the years. Um, they say you have to have four world-class players. I shouldn't have said that to you, should I? Because I know he didn't win you any money. Um, <laughs> I'm not as old as you, Jim. He, <laughs> he weren't a jockey when I was betting. <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> they say you have to have four world-class players to win a major tournament. Do England have them? I, I'm not sure who the they are. and Who says that you need four world-class players? I don't think any team's got four world-class players. I think world class is a world class means you get in every other team in the world. You get picked in every other team. That's world class. I don't think you need four world class players. You need players to perform to the best of their ability in a month period at the same time. That wins your tournaments. Look at Greece. That wins your tournaments. They all play to their absolute maximum at the right time. None of them players really went on and played for Real Madrid, did they, or Barcelona? But they had the month of their life, and that's what you need. You don't need world class players because if that was the case, the other teams had no point in them turning up. Do we have any world class players in your view? I think Harry Kane. There's not many. I don't see too many teams Harry Kane don't get into. Do you know what I mean? You probably have a case at Norway. They probably go, oh, "I'll play Haaland instead of Kane." But I don't see any other country that wouldn't pick Harry Kane. So I would say Harry Kane's world class. Bellingham maybe in the future. Oh, yeah, in the future, he's a kid. He's young. He's 20. Do you know what I mean? Is it, how many people have been great, great at 20? But, yeah, he's got the potential. You know, if he keeps on doing what he's doing, he one million percent. Uh, DJ Foz says, who do you think the next England manager will be? Clearly, Gareth Southgate won't be there after this tournament. Well, DJ Foz, you could be jumping the gun there, but mm. let's assume that he's not. Who do you see stepping into his shoes? It'd be t it's timings, Jeff. It's all about timings, you know, because they won't. I, d I don't think they'll do it straight after. I, and I hope he, he, I think he'll still be there because I think, as I say, I keep on saying that they'll win the tournament. But it's timings. I, I remember over the years, Sir Alex Ferguson, when he leaves, who's going to be manager? Brian Robson, Mark Hughes, Steve Bruce. Who's going to be manager? Steve Bruce, Mark Hughes, Brian Robson. When Sir Alex Ferguson chose to leave, then managers weren't pulling trees up and then David Moyes got the job so it's timings it's whoever's doing well at the time I'm putting my hand up for Mauricio Pochettino but then I put my hand up for Mauricio Pochettino for every job that comes up no I, I like I like him I, I do like him 100% I'm a big fan of his gutted that he's left Chelsea but you know he's Argentinian yeah you know, brilliant people, Argent, Argent that don't like you know, England and Argentina. I played in the game '98, and the game they played 2002. They they hate England as much as as Scotland. 
um, well, that may be, but he's look. He's a he's a fantastic. He's a brilliant manager. manager. You know, but... Yeah, good luck with Argentina when he manages them. Okay, um, look, don't forget you can leave us a voice note uh, on WhatsApp. The number to call o two o three nine five one nine six five three. Thank you to everyone who's uh, sent voice notes in. Shall we hear from one now? Hi, Merce. It's Ollie from Norwich here. I would like to know how your move away from Arsenal, where you're an absolute club legend, by the way, came about. What did Arsene Wenger say to you? Uh, good question, mate. Uh, pure, yeah, that was me. That was me. Uh, it was in my addictions at the time. I'd been offered a four-year contract to Arsenal and I peeled Reed. Couldn't get my head around Jeff. Got offered £32,000 a month extra to go to Middlesbrough. And I, I, I couldn't, couldn't, yeah. When you're in addictions, full addictions of gambling, I, I chose the money, chose the money. And that, and that was the reason, simple as that. A four-year contract, Arsenal, I dropped down to the championship to, f- f- yeah, pure greed, pure greed. Did, did you need the money at that time? What What's need the yeah. money, you know? I, I ate the same food as what I'd have eaten if I was at, at, at Arsenal. So no, just just to feed my addictions, and that that was the that was the problem. When you when you're a gam when you're a compulsive gambler, you, it's all it's all about having the, the money and the ammunition to gamble. And no disrespect to Middlesbrough because I loved it and it's a great place, great people. But at the time, that's what I did it for. But afterwards, you know, I'm so glad I did sign for Middlesbrough in the end because it, it was another great experience in my career. And, and look, it doesn't matter what profession you're in, if somebody comes up and offers you shed loads of money, mm. you know, the chances are you're going to take it. You know what? Yeah, but I wouldn't do that again. I wouldn't. I, I learnt my lesson. I learnt my lesson, not all about money. You know, I think that's a, a big important thing as well. You know, it's, it's about being happy. And, you know, I just think at the time I learnt a lesson, but I learnt a good lesson because, as I said, I wouldn't swap that year at Middlesbrough for anything. I wouldn't. It was amazing. I loved it. But every time after that, every single club I went to after that, I took a pay cut. Really? Yeah, because I, I just wasn't about, yeah, I knew I just wanted to play football. Okay. And that's what I played for. Here's an interesting one, uh, and I'm going to be fascinated to know the answer to this because I've never heard this before. Mia in Southampton says, I once read, Merce, that you asked out Kylie Minogue at the Brit Awards. Is this true? Yeah. Yeah. Craig, okay. Well, well. How did this come about? No, I was at Brit Awards. I was quite famous when I used to play football. No, I was. You're I was at, quite famous. No, I was at the Brit Awards. Uh, got invited. My, my agent uh, knew, were, knew people at Sony Records, and I, I was well tanked up. And I went up to her and said, "Would you go out with me?" Yeah. And and how how did she let you down? She didn't. We went out for about three months, and then I broke it up. Like. I did. She went no. Oh, no, she said no straight away. A bouncer come over and said, "Get away." No. Yeah, yeah. And then I see her a year after. I was sober and I had to go and see Robbie Williams. He was hosting, or it might be a couple of years later. He was hosting the Brits or something, and he just stopped drinking. And, and my agent said, "Would you go and have a word with him, a chat?" And she, I see her there, and she went, "Oh, you're." You, she she remembered me. She did say, "Oh, you you're not you're not drunk like the last time." So, yeah, it must have a little bit of an impression. Brilliant. That's a great story. <laughs> you you believe that me. I was completely taken. Well, you were you you are a famous guy, but you were uh, you know a, pretty much a mega star yourself then. You know, so yeah, no I reason didn't, didn't why. have any number ones. But yeah, you got <laughs> I, I, yeah yeah true. Well, look, we talked about your your stardom. Fred yeah. has asked, um, do you think you should have played more times for England than you did? I'm going to go no. I'm going to go no. And I say that because of what I was doing off the pitch. Wasn't living my life right off the pitch. So, yeah, I, to play the amount of times I played was a miracle in itself. So, no, I wouldn't say. I should have with, with what I could have done. But every time I played for England, I never produced. No, and that's my job. That's why I find hard at the moment is being critical of the England team because I never did it. I, I played 21 times, but I never come off the pitch and thought, I played well today. 
You know, like when I played at Arsenal or Middlesbrough or Villa, I never felt that I took that form with England. And that and that's what hurts me at the moment where I have to be honest and give my opinion like that it's not great, but I know how hard it is. I know how hard it is. And that's why I still think we win it. But I, that, that's the hard part about the job. You know, a couple of years ago, sitting on Sky, being critical of Ronaldo. My God, how can I be critical? But that's my job. You have to see it as you say it. You can't just go, oh my God, he's great. I can't have a go. You've got to be honest. And that's my problem. I never performed enough at England. And there were some good players playing when I played. Why, real- why do you think you never performed? So say, you know, like someone like a Foden now and we go, Foden really don't touch the ball and Saka ain't really got into the games yet. When they're playing for their clubs, everything, a lot of the stuff goes through them. You know, if you watch Arsenal play, they have patterns of play to get the ball out to Saka as quick as possible to get him on a 1v1. And the way they'll do that is... Odegaard will play as inside right in a midfield three as an eight. He will make that run into the box. He's never getting the ball. But what he'll do, he'll take the defender with him. And as the defender comes in, the ball gets switched to Saka. And then Saka has all the space to start running at players. With England, the defender's not that far away from Saka when he gets the ball. So instead of touching the ball 70, 80 times like you do at your club, there's five of them players in England, so you're touching it 30 or 35 times. Then you start getting anxious because you're not touching it as many times. You start making the wrong decisions. You see it with Foden the other day. He beats two players. He's only got to put the ball through to Kane. He has a shot from 40 yards that dribbles to the keeper. He wouldn't do that, man. See, he'd have put in Haaland because he knows he's going to touch the ball again in two seconds, in, in a minute's time and, and another minute. But because he's not touching it enough times, you get anxious. You start forcing the game. And that's why we're not keeping the ball because everybody's trying to do something special. And that's probably that's probably one of the reasons that I never really performed because I worked on law of averages. You know, if you ask fans at clubs I play for, I always try and hit the glory ball. And law of averages ain't going to come off all the time, but people are going to remember the times it does. And you have enough touches of the ball to try that. You go away with England, you you don't get... And I'm not making excuses, but I'm just saying that's how hard it is for these players. They don't touch the ball as many times for their country as what they do for their club, especially the the gifted players. The ones that are not as gifted, and I don't mean that in a horrible way, but the ones at the back and the ones holding midfield players who are good at their job, they haven't got to, re- cre- they haven't got to create anything and creating is the hardest thing. So that's why it's a struggle sometimes. You said there were a lot of great players around the England squad at that time. Oh. Yeah, give us a few. Yeah, Robbie Fowler, uh, Ian Wright, Les Ferdinand, Alan Shearer, Teddy Sheridan, Steve McManaman, Darren Anderton, David Beckham, Wow, Paul Wintz. Pretty good. Uh, they, they, were, they were top players, top players. Some of them were world class. And, you know, you, you're talking people like Ian Wright, you know, didn't even didn't play nowhere near enough as what he should have. You know, the geezer was on a different planet. But... Alan Shearer got in and performed and that was it. He stayed in. Uh, Simon says, love the pod, Jeff. Thank you, Simon. Uh, one of the funniest things I've seen was Paul's tooth falling out on TV. <laughs> You're too right. Uh, what's made you laugh the most when presenting? Ah, oh, that's not even a difficult one for me. It's been a red card at Fratton Park, but who, uh, Chris Kamara? <laughs> yeah. Red card. Must have missed that. Red card. <laughs> And so on and so forth. It's just one of the great TV moments. Yeah. And it be, it was iconic, you know. I mean, we, you know, it, it went viral on you know, on the internet. Yeah. And, oh, my goodness. And, and Cammy's asked about it everywhere he goes. Oh, and yeah. I'm asked about it everywhere I go. And it's been, what, more than 10 years now, way more than 10 years. Well, yeah, 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 yeah anyway, 100%. That, that, so that was an easy one, Sam. But <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Uh, let's hear from uh, one of you guys out there again. Hey, Mas. It's Joseph from London. Just wanted to ask you, which of your managers gave you the hardest time during pre-season? It, it, Jules Graham. 100% Jules Graham. Yeah, it was so, so Probably hard. not just during pre-season. But no, during not just, but well. it was like we were fit, fit. That was hard. Yeah, I would say Jules Graham. And I, I would say that because as time went on, Jeff, then then the, the watches come in and the heart rate monitors and then it was like all done by heart rates. As soon as your heart rate got to a certain stage, you had to stop. You know, and that was the way it was. When when I was at Arsenal, no, you, run, run, run. I used to say, I've swallowed a fly. I can't breathe. He used to go mad. He used to go, 
fucking get moving. Like, and I go, no, I swallowed a fly. I hadn't swallowed a fly. <laughs> but yeah, so no, I hated running. I didn't like running. It, it, well, you would test, I like, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd run on the pitch though. Uh, yeah. I, I'd run on the pitch, but I just didn't like running without the, I just didn't like running when I'm not playing football. Do, does it surprise you when people have been questioning the fitness of England players during these Euros? Yeah, again, confidence. Confidence is, is honestly, if you're winning football matches, you know, everybody's, you get more air in your lungs. Everybody wants the ball. You'll be surprised. We go one nil or two nil up against the team. We'll look like the Ireland go trotters. Believe me, everybody will want the ball. The other team get disinterested. At the moment, teams are in football matches. We haven't got away from anybody. Do you know what I mean? And and that that's that's the thing. It's It's confidence as well. They do look tired. But you, when you're playing badly, you get tired very quickly. It's weird how it works. John Gilhaney, uh, he's uh, texted in and said, has Merce and his teammates ever gone to a manager and said, we like you, boss, but your tactics are all wrong for us. Can we try this? No. No. Uh, George Graham, I worked under no. John Gregory, no. Uh, Colin Lee, no. Do you ever think about Harry. doing it? Were there any ever times when you thought, you know, what? You know we're, we're better than this. We're playing the wrong way. These yeah. tactics are all wrong. Yeah. You know what? I was quite fortunate. I played in too many good teams. You know, we were always winning. You know, I was always, I mean, Portsmouth, we won Premier League. How dare would I ever go and knock on Harry Redknapp's door, thousand game in a million years. Uh, Middlesbrough, Brian Robson, you know, one of the greatest players ever to play football, in my opinion, in midfield, you know, we we got promoted. No, I wouldn't. I would no. I, George Graham, no. I mean, Colin Lee, I would have. You know, it wasn't working the way we were playing. But yeah, I was coming towards the end of my career, and I I was probably one of the culprits of us not being very good. Was I wasn't very good then. Okay, Blakey. On the not sure he's on the buses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout our age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Says, did Merce ever have the chance to play in Scotland? Did you? Yeah, a few times. God bless him. Walter Smith come in for me quite a few times when he was Glasgow Rangers manager, but Jules Graham wouldn't entertain it one bit. Yeah. So, no. I, I not had the chart. I, I was, they, they come in for me quite a few times, but Jules Graham turned it down. Mm, I mean, they'd have had some good players at the time, would they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, they were the top team, them Rangers, top team. Okay, so um, opportunities to play in Scotland, but not taken. Um, Stephen Sullivan says, uh, Merce, did you prefer scoring or creating goals? And what was the best goal or assist that you ever had? You know, I, I, I got as much pleasure out of uh, pr providing. I think more as my career, when my career started off, I played at centre forward. My, my job was to score goals as a centre forward, me and Alan Smith. As I went to the wing and played in as attacking midfield player, then my job was to, to provide, and I love providing goals for people. My best goal I ever scored, I probably wouldn't say it was my greatest goal, but it was against Leeds United in the FA Cup. We're 2-0 down at Ivory. Ray Parler scored. Then I scored last kick of the game. We drew 2-2. Then we went up to Ellen Road and Ian Wright absolutely destroyed them that night. And that year we went on and won the FA Cup. And... Growing up as a kid, coming from Holsden, which is not far from Wembley, my dream was to win the FA Cup. It was, it was the biggest game in the world when I was growing up as a kid, and we went on and won the the FA Cup that year. And we we wouldn't have won it if I not we would we wouldn't have got anywhere near it if I didn't score the goal. We'd have got knocked out. And the FA Cup's hard because you know you got to be on that train, and years go past very quickly. And you know it's like next year you could. But not Man City because Man City weren't no good when I used to play but when like now you draw Man City in the FA Cup third round away you're out the cup and that's another year gone and that's how quickly it goes you you don't win the FA Cup the draw wins you the FA Cup do you remember your first goal everyone remember, remembers yeah that Wimbledon goal. Wimbledon Plough Lane yeah Wimbledon away yeah header come in I headed it and Laurie Sanchez was on the goal line he tried to stop it with his hand lucky enough it went in yeah and that was it, first ever goal, Plough Lane. Oh, 
Great memories. And of course, all of us are just envious listening to them because in our dreams, we've all done it, but you've done it in reality. Yeah. Fantastic. Surely your dreams would have been better than Plough Lane. Yeah, they were, <laughs> oh, my, my, my dreams were Victoria Park, Hartlepool, yeah, believe yeah. you me. Um, have you been Plough Which Lane? was better yeah, than Plough Lane, say, by the yeah. way, and is. Um, Andy Nicholson from Suffolk says, uh, how do you think Kieran McKenna and Ipswich will fare next season in the Premier League? He says, to be honest, I'm more excited about that than the overhyped England team. You will be till it starts, till the league starts. You will. I was talking. I was. I was talking. Believe it or not, I was in the park yesterday with the kids. Went to the park with me, Kate, and the kids after school. And there was a lad in there. Believe it or not, he's an Ipswich fan. He's at the uni round the corner. And we was chatting. I said, "You're looking forward to it." He said, "Yeah." I said, "You got a good start." He went, "We have Liverpool, and Man City, our yes. first two games. They're bottom of the league straight away." And that's the problem. <laughs> Liverpool at home, we don't know what Liverpool we're going to get. New manager with Arnie Slot, changes yeah. some of the personnel as well. Yeah, I may, may be like that, but I can think of better teams to be playing than Liverpool. I can. And Man City. It's so important to start well when you're a team that just get promoted because this le the, the Premier League's vicious. You can go bang, wallop, crush, lose six games in, you know. And he, he, I talked to him and I said, what did you say? And he goes, yeah, I look at that game. I go, we might get something there. And I get to Christmas, we've got about 10 points. And it's hard. And that's the problem. And you need to win games to get confidence. And if you could look, that's a bad start. And I know people go, oh, get them games out of the way. No, no, you need to get points on the ball. Because as soon as you drop into that bottom three, you know, you're up against it. And it, it's very hard for a team like Ipswich to go and win two free games on the trot. So they'll be down near the bottom. But what he's done there and what Ipswich has done as a whole is, is if it was in a book, you'd throw the book away. You would throw the book away, especially with the teams that were down there last year. There were some big football teams and they come up from League One to the championship. It was amazing. You, you know what? They were relegated in 2002. Yeah. Oh. And they got 36 points. If they get 36 points this season, they won't be getting relegated. No, no chance. That's for sure. Mm. Just, just want to round it off by bringing another question, which was in you know, a similar vein, actually, from Daz, who's in South East England. Um, we talked about Ipswich. What chance of the three promoted sides surviving? So Leicester and Southampton. I mean, I Leicester, don't know about Leicester, Leicester probably going to get a point. They're going to get points. So I don't, so... I don't see any of them. I don't. I don't. I, 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 I like to see them. I, I want Ipswich to stick to their principles and play like the way they did. And I want Southampton to do that. I, I think if they can do that, I, I, I quite like that. I quite like, you know, but they don't want to overplay too much. If You know, I looked at Burnley last year and you look at it now and Vincent Company's got the job on the back of playing a way that was always going to get Burnley relegated. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Like, yes. I watch Burnley play and I'm like, you need to get the ball away from your goal. Get it away from your goal and make teams work to score. But if he'd done that, he wouldn't be manager of Bayern Munich. And the, the problem is, you know, McKenna's a good manager. The lad, uh, Russell Martin, Martin very yeah. good. They play amazing football. You know, Ipswich opened the game up. You know, they were better than teams last year. They took a chance. You know, Southampton pass it as well. He won't change. You know, I remember when he was manager at MK Dons, they had, I think, the second or third most possession in the whole of Europe. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, so he ain't going to change. And I, hope, and I hope they don't. I hope, you know, Luton never changed. Luton come up, they played exactly the same way and they were competitive until Adi Bay got injured. And then I think if he didn't get injured, they would have stayed up, Adi Bay. Um, but for all of those fans of Ipswich, Leicester and oh, enjoy Southampton. It. Enjoy yeah. it. I, I, I don't know. Southampton, it's, did Steve Cooper get the job? Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah I, Leicester. They, they got yeah. a chance then because yeah. I like uh, Steve Cooper. And I'm I've so pleased he's got back in three football. things to say to you, fans. Fulham, Bournemouth, Brentford, mm. all established Premier League teams now. Yeah, someone's got to do it, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, you got, yeah exactly. It's, it's who you buy and it's who you, and the loans are important as well. Yeah. I think... Ipswich were very good on their loans last year. And that is it for today's Q&A episode. Merce and I are back next week with a reaction to the round of 16. Please leave a review and follow us on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts from. Football's Greatest Euros is a folding pocket production with BBC Studios.